Okay, well, here we go. Tonight is the 16th of June. We have people joining from the beach and the lab and all other sorts of unnamed places. Welcome to Dallas Personal Robotics Group. And uh, we're just going to have a light gab session tonight as we bounce around the table and as various people manage to come in and come out of the session and deal with uh, Google Meet issues. So why don't we get started? So uh, uh, I was going to suggest, how about Mr. Harold? Would, would you like to uh, sure. take us into things and describe what's been going on with you? Well, yes. Well, here, let me go pull up my uh, screen here a little bit. Put it on. Um, I did have a little success. Excellent. I do mean little. Start somewhere. Okay. So, you know my flight with uh, Ross, too, and getting it compiled and trying to make it work and things. Yeah. Well, let me show you something. See these things going on right here? Yeah. I have a listener and I have a talker. They've been running for several days now because I fired it up and I was so happy I didn't want to unfire them. They're really? Still, yeah, that was built from source. So, so I uh, the, the 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 key factor of that there were a couple of things. One, CMake doesn't register things correctly if you install things in in the order they tell you to and even if you do tell them to you have to uninstall and sometimes that doesn't work so you have to tell them to fake uninstall then reinstall and then it's okay um for some a couple of the libraries i still haven't figured out a couple of them one of them's the bullet library and the other one is the qt5 library so my turtle sim doesn't work however i found a lot of things i got this thing called Colcon, C-O-L-C-O-N. I've never heard of it before. Apparently, it's some like build processing thing that runs a bunch of stuff. And so what I did was um, I looked that up and found that I could say, hey, only run one process at a time because it was running a bunch and you couldn't tell what was going on. And continue on error. Don't ever stop. If something fails, fine, fail it, go on. And that managed to run all the way through. Uh, and then once I was able to run all the way through, some stuff still didn't work. And I was still not happy with all that because I could run the same command again and a different build order would come out. <laughs> Which is really disturbing because I also told it to clear its cache and clear itself first and then rebuild like you're nothing there, right? Oh, yeah. And I would get different build steps done. And so I'm. Um, what happened was the machine called a reboot, you know, of OS update, you know, so it rebooted and none of that stuff was there. So I had to go, I didn't write down all those options. So then I had to go research and do all those options again. And once I got all those options in there, put it until to go, let it run all the way through. And then when it got done, I'm like, what the hell? There's some errors there, but there's only a couple of them. Let's just see if something works. And so I ran the, I ran the talker and it started talking. So I'm like, what the hell? I ran the listener and it started listening. And so this is what you see now. So, and I've been uh, so tied up with work and doing stuff, I've not been able to get too much time in the lab, so to speak. And yeah. uh, so, this is about what I've got going. Uh, the other thing, I'm going to make another excuse too. Mom was visiting us over the weekend, and um, and uh, I figured I have plenty of time to get here and do this. Well, I was wrong because mom takes a lot of attention, even though the wife's here to give attention. If, I, uh -huh. if she doesn't see us regularly, she starts asking where the other one is. So I'm like, I just gave up. You know, I found her some Andy Griffith, watched a bunch of Andy Griffith and Love Boat and uh, <laughs> old girls, uh, you know, fired up on the TV and we had to ride all the time. So oh boy. that was my uh, that was my weekend and what I've been doing on the week. So my next step, though, is, oh, something else. Jonathan Hoddle. You guys know Jonathan? He yep. calls me up and I went and spent a Sunday with him. Not this last Sunday, but a week ago in the afternoon. Met his wife, his kids, all that kind of stuff. And one of the reasons I went out to uh, see him was he's decided to get rid of I, I do a lot of, I, I like Rairobi stuff. And he knew that. He's 
he's now switching all over to rigid stuff and he had a crap ton of these things and tools and brad nailers and drills and hammer drills i now own three hammer drills which before i don't only own i only own one so now i got two more out of a bunch of other stuff he just said either i give it i said man what's this so you can sell this or something he goes well it's either I give it to, uh, i give it to you or i get 10 bucks for it in a garage sale so i'm like okay so now i've got a crap ton of these batteries some of which i've got to uh, dig into this one because it's missing a couple of screws yeah i can tell he's already dug into it and this yeah. is one of the ones that needs to be reset because uh it's got some circuitry in there and when you pop it in the chargers if it doesn't have some minimal voltage in here like one of the cells just charged for some reason in some weird fashion it won't even attempt to charge the battery so what you do is you crack these open and uh use a uh, a power source and uh, apply some voltage to get them up to a minimum voltage and you can pop them in the charger and they charge just fine there you go and uh, that's sort of and so uh, so that's what i did that's another one of the things i did so uh, but anyway my next step that's, go ahead go ahead i was gonna say that's cool because now you get a power drill you get a hammer drill for each hand and then a spare yeah exactly exactly and then <laughs> the next the next goal is is to figure out since i got something that works on the install how do i take what i have here and compile it and get it on to the to the latte panda and then to be able to run the demos on them right and then once i do that i can figure out other things and i'll probably then have to get into 3d modeling and do some other things to build up the robot so i can actually mount all this stuff in here you know one step closer to having those turn Hmm. That's cool. And it, so, Harold, do you know if that works for DeWalt batteries? <laughs> do what now? Does that work for DeWalt batteries? It may. I've not done any research on that, but it hmm. may. Um, yeah. I will tell you, though, on this particular one, you can't see on it. I know you don't have a good camera on this one. And I also had my main light over my bench decide to go out. I opened it up. I'm looking at the power supply. It looks like I've lost. Uh, a transistor it's a surface mount which i don't do that very well but i don't do it at all at the moment i need to do better but i got to looking at it for the 29.95 it's going to take to replace it my time to actually figure out what parts on there and do all that stuff is not worth that so i'm just going to go get another one of those but i got to build a triple led so which could be cool i might have to do some of those <laughs> anyway anyway what's going to happen though on these because I, I, I took another one apart um these not so much they're, uh, they're star drives, they're torques, and they're security torques. So they have a little hole in the middle of them. I happen to have a whole bunch of those staying around here so I can I can get them open. But if you can't get them open, you can go look on YouTube, and what they'll do is they'll tell you where to drill. And so you drill a little hole on each side of these. And how I jump started them, I jump started each cell by plus and minus on each cell because they're, uh, they're series up. And to be able to get each cell to a minimum voltage, and then of course the combined um, was able to get the whole voltage. But if you can't do that, there's a there's where the where the you can you can charge them all at once if you go across the whole series. It just I just me being a little OCD on it wanted to do each cell independently. But um, it'll tell you where to drill here and over here to get to the plus and minus of the the, the, of the battery packs to open them up because whether you're drilling them in here or taking out the screws, one of these is going to have an anti-tamper plug in it. And as soon as you make it tampered, right, you're done with the warranty anyway. So, yeah. you know, it just goes away. Yeah, these are all the packs anyway, so. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's blown out anyhow, so what the hell, I don't know what you're going to do with it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Might be a little dangerous though to drill into a battery pack. Yeah, yeah, they, they, and they did mention a few things about that. About you need to be real careful because you want to drill through the plastic, not into the battery itself. Yes. <laughs> were those night cats or light posts? Uh, they're light posts. In fact, these right oh, here. Yeah. These right here. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that that's extra special careful, right? Yeah. 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 There, there's a reason for the safety circuitry. Yeah, I I, I, under, yeah, I understand that. I understand that as well. <laughs> I, I remember in chemistry, if you ever seen, we, we didn't, uh, 
we didn't like lithium so much, although lithium in in water can be fun at times, along with sodium in water can be fun at times. You get a big enough chunk of it. Um, but we did in chemistry class, we did explore some, you know, because sometimes they make stuff like planes out of titanium. You know, like some of the supersonic stuff they make out of titanium where they did at one time. And they still may. And when those when that catches on fire, here, let me show you what happens when that catches on fire. So we used the magnesium that we could light to light the titanium because you can't really light titanium hard unless you get this stuff hard enough. And let me just say, you can't look at that. It's like literally <laughs> your welding when it fires up and gets that hot and that fast. And, and it burns. It burns really bad, really fast and really, really hot. And lithium is very similar um, in that as far as the reactivity goes when it starts to get up and go. Huh. As I understand that. Hey, so on your talker and listener, that's Ross, right? And what is, it, is it running on your laptop or what's it running on now? It's running on my desktop right now because that's where I'm building all the things. Yeah. And um, and uh, it's, it's sitting up there. And I was going to start something else as well. And I didn't. What did I do? So there's the listener, right? Here's this thing. Um, uh, local. Does that do what it's supposed to do? No. Call. It's supposed to then. So now I don't know why that's not working. Ah, there it goes. Cool. And so now we can do one of these things. Ross. Two. Uh, hold on. Let me go look up my. There it is. Cheat I'm gonna see. I was when I was doing here. I'm gonna see if I can run another listener. So I've got one talker, right? And I don't know yeah. if, if I believe. I want to listen. I believe if I fire up a second listener, the one talker it'll receive messages from both. Oh, get out of here! Dave, I don't know if you know it, but you're you're squealing. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody was a squealing. Somebody was not happy. Oh, come on. You see it running right there. <laughs> and now you're not running here. Uh, you'll get it. Why are you doing that? What do you mean? That's cool. Okay. It's looking good, Harold. You're making good progress. Yeah, so come on. I don't know. I, I did the same command twice and it doesn't work twice. What the hell? Oh, no. There it is. That's why. I'm an idiot. I need a python. <laughs> See, I don't know everything. And come on. It says it's listening. Okay, so they picked up 2581. And this is 25. Yeah, so both of these are receiving now stuff from the talker. There you go. Which is, I would hope it worked that way. You know, yeah. I assume it would be. And so that was one of the things I want to try. I bet if I fire up another listener, I'll get double the stuff going into the talkers. I mean, another talker, I'll get double the stuff going into the list. Nice. It's a peer-to-peer -peer mapped up thing. Hey, I can do these things. Hey, I can listen to these things. That sort of thing, right? Yeah. And so, yeah, so I, made a little progress. I made a little progress. So I, get I, got to, I got to do some more stuff and get it on the Latte Panda and then do some more assembly on the, on the robot itself. But I figure if I couldn't do this, all the other stuff didn't matter so much. I mean, I could still work on the bot and do things like that, but um, that's not, this doesn't get me to where I want to go on my thing. So anyway, that's, man, that's about all I got. Okay, cool. All right. And let's uh, let's swing around. I'm thinking a couple weeks ago, we made Jack wait to the very end. So maybe, uh, how are you doing, Jack? It's been a little while. You, you having any luck now? Class out? Robots running? Yeah, class is finally out. Fortunately, I haven't gotten too much done. I did finish the cooler robot, for, and I'm not able to really figure out which one to focus on now. 
but I'm working again on the club robot, but having trouble with the LiDAR sensor now. What are you trying to do? Well, I think last time I talked to you guys, I was able to track the wall. Yeah. And I was trying to put that all together, but now it's not even running anymore, the LiDAR sensor, so not sure what's yeah. going on. Uh, it's always something, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so other than that, you're just slowly gagging around and enjoying the summer then. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Mm -hmm. well, is, your, is your dad still able to fly? Or there enough? Uh, he hasn't had a lot of flights lately, but uh, yeah, it's not looking too good with all of that so far. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Are they talking about layoffs or furloughs or uh, like downgrades mainly? Like downgrades. Probably won't keep his captain position. Oh, oh man. wow! Yeah. Huh. Mm hmm. Yep. Mm hmm. So you know what? I don't understand um, how that actually works. I mean, if you're not a captain, I mean, I guess you got a co-pilot captain. You know what? I'm not looking to go crazy with that explanation, but I've never really like, understood how all that. Work. Yeah, so he'd move back to first officer then, which the pays significantly less. Wow. Mm -hmm. Oh, but it, hopefully it's still, I mean, it's, with so many, I think American was, I've heard, is running 20% of their normal flights. So uh, it seems yeah. to me that be, being able to keep some kind of paycheck in that environment is at least worth something. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah, they have been laying off a lot of people. Wow. Mm -hmm. So on your ice oh. chest, how is it going? You got to finish then? Uh, my what? Your ice chest, so the golf ice oh, chest. Oh, yeah. Thing. Yeah, it's finished. Or, you know, as finished right? as a robot can be anyway. Right. But, yeah. It's DPRG finished. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you saw the video, but there was somebody had a, cu a couple weeks back where they had a restaurant and they were using one of those uh, CISPO uh, cart type thing. Oh, yeah. The, from the door to the customer on the curb. Yeah, the Starship robot. Uh, it was it was some Mexican restaurant that I saw oh, okay. that guy had it. Yeah. And I saw yeah. that. I thought of you. <laughs> yeah. That's actually kind of what I based my robot on, was that robot. The Starship one, huh? Yeah. Starship, yeah, I don't think I've seen that. Very nice. Uh, it's uh, been uh, there's some running around in Frisco. So, uh, oh, really? Yeah, I've heard. That would be cool to see. One of my colleagues uh, got uh, tripped over one on the way to the post office one day. So. <laughs> huh. So is that associated with Amazon? The Amazon? Uh, no, it isn't actually. I think it's a German company. Not actually yeah, sure. Somewhere it's in Europe. Been in Europe, yeah. Oh, yeah. And they have several uh, several worldwide kind of uh, deployments, mm -hmm. oh. international deployments, I should say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I should send you guys a video of that. I took a time lapse of it. Oh hell yeah! Great. All right. Uh, would I, how would I, uh, who would I send it to? Well, you can present it, uh, in this yeah, session. Right? It here somehow, right? Uh, yeah. If you so have it's like the screen sharing thing? Yeah. yeah I think you, you can, oh, okay, you can uh, bottom right, present now, and then pick your main screen, and then just open your video, and it should go. All right. I'll, uh, I'll go get my phone then. Oh, okay. Cool. Okay. Hey, well, uh, while you're going to set up, uh, why don't we bounce over to John, right? Yeah, right that sounds you. good. So, right. Mr. John, how about how about you this week? Well, okay, I've gotten a little farther along, so let me uh, drag the here. <laughs> so, so I've actually modified the head, so right now it's more exposed. So I have the smaller bore on it, and so ah. As you can see, right now I have to have the wires reconnect a little bit, and then I have inches. Ah, don't worry, any more hands. <laughs> Eventually, I plan to put uh, yeah some hinges on the front. Because the concept is to have it so that ah, 
so that when I'll, you know, open it up, I can put the battery right where all these wires are eventually when yeah. I get them all to their proper place on the top. And so hold it a little higher and hold it still. There you go. Yeah, okay. So you're going to have the batteries inside the head. Right. Yeah. Actually, they go down in the center there where all the all wires right. are right now. Because these wires you see are actually for the arms. So I started to write code for the arms. So let me get the head back together a little bit, if I can. Uh, there we are. I've got a name for him already, John. I think it should be Ishi And then uh, let me unplug it in so I'll give you some power. Because of his oh, over here. Oh, where is that power source? So right now, okay, well, there should be some movement. Oh, there his go. arms. There you go. So yeah, so I'm starting to work, write some code for the arms on that, and then the feet. And that's about as far as I got with this. Hey, and you depending on progress every week. So it depends on if this uh, shield board works, I may move it to the other head, which is this one. So we'll uh -huh. see. So they're basically interchangeable, the heads are. So that's We're the plan. Reach around and scratch something in behind him. Was that the goal? Or? Yeah, it can only go. It can only go this far, Ray. Oh, <laughs> you got to change that, John. <laughs> so you know, but he can't reach down <laughs> and touch his feet. Back, <laughs> Ray, you're projecting some kind of itch on this situation. That's really I don't want to go there. That's right. Yeah. Well, uh, I do have the switch off to the side, so in theory, it could turn itself off. You know, so you have to turn it on, then it would turn it off, and so forth. Oh, that would be good. A useless robot, right? <laughs> you basically. <laughs> so that's what I've been up to. Hey, looking good. Yeah. So, 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 so we move over to the beach, beach man. <laughs> How's it going there, Ron? What what are you up to these days? Yeah, it's it's been doing good. I've been messing with this uh, robot right here. I don't know if I can see it. Maybe I need to turn off my background then. Yeah, because <laughs> it's that's not going to be invisible robot. Uh, see the real uh, Ron Jack That's a really good <laughs> trick, the invisible robot. <laughs> that's an invisible one. Let me see if I can. But anyway, it it is a. Uh, there you go. See it? Oh yeah. Right. Ooh, nice. Yeah, so this is a jet bot. Yeah, the Jetson. Uh, the Jetson Nano on top, but there's a kit that I bought that makes it a you know self-navigating robot and. It's very interesting. The whole kit itself, it comes with the Wi-Fi, you know, the fan for the sink, and the battery that goes in here. Uh, I guess this is, it, it kind of tells you the IP address. That makes a difference <laughs> when you're working on these robots. No so doubt. I think so, it's so is it a Raspberry? So is that a Raspberry on there? Is what I'm thinking. It's a uh, Jetson Nano. Let me share my screen, mm. and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Is that me? Is that better? Uh, okay. This is the wave share one, right? The wave. Is it mute? Yeah. Um. Here we got you. You better? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think there's some feedback when I. Okay, so this is that one right there. Let me get to that screen. It's this one right here. It's called the Jetson Nano. I think it's a ninety-nine dollar. Can you hear me? Yeah, but uh, your screen is not shared. Oh, my screen is not shared. Let's see if I can share my. I screen. just put a link for it in the. Uh, in the. Is chat. that better? Nope. Now you're presenting. Yep. Okay. So this is that one right there. It's a $99 um, computer. It's kind of like a Raspberry Pi, 
but it has a GPU, a graphics processor for your uh, inferencing. And the specs for it, you know, you, it's a quad core ARM processor, it has 128 NVIDIA GPU, um, and, and it can process, encode and decode these videos as it goes. And it's it's pretty pretty good. It uses the the camera that you would use. This is the one that for the I guess the MIPI camera, just the same as connector for the Raspberry Pi. Uh huh. Yeah. So, but it didn't come with Wi-Fi. <laughs> it does not come with Wi-Fi, but it has all these ports that you can you can use to connect to, uh, and. Yeah, and, and then, of course, the barrel jack for power. But the kit itself, uh, it's called a JetBot AI kit. Um, let me see if I have that somewhere here. Yeah, this one, I bought it on Amazon. So the kit itself has this... Uh, you see the Xbox controller? Yeah. Yeah. The the cool thing about this Xbox controller, it connects to your computer. You can convert it and and I was amazed just on the this simple one I think because you can uh convert it to, to uh, let's see if I can find that. This gamepad tester. I can convert it to an Xbox 360 controller. Uh, so you go to this website and it can actually get all the you know buttons and how you would program which buttons you you can read but if i i can press this button for seven seconds and it would convert it let me see if i can turn it off huh. and turn it back on uh, and it'll, it'll so right now it's on as a playstation so it works both ways i can make this as a playstation controller and an xbox controller whichever i want mode wh which mode i want it to be and it, it just you just connect it to a usb so it comes with this it comes with the wi-fi that has an antenna um and the, the reason why i like this kit is that you know you do a lot of the computer vision work that you know that you can you can use it for and it has good tutorial for anyone starting with kind of robotics and how they would use it for machine learning and ai it has it's it's on github it has this um uh, kind of user guide and it has a good wiki to to kind of run it how to flash it has its you know the whole the whole kit is there. Uh, let me do a demo. Development or? Say that again. Does it have an IDE like um, you know, how you would how you would program it? Um, okay. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to think. Uh, the um, OpenMV H7 has a really good one. I don't know if you've seen that or the. Um, uh, Cyped um, A210 boards have a pretty good one. Mm -hmm. um, so does the does the Jetson Nano have one? So the the cool thing is you would program this in Python, right? You would program right. this and how it how it connects to make it easier for beginner is that you connect it through this Python notebook. So once you you know you put your SD card you. You burn, you know, you create the the operating system, you create and boot it up, connect it to Wi-Fi. Uh, then it tells you to connect to, you know, once it has its IP address to this Python notebook. So you can actually program it in the browser without any, uh, without connecting anything on the device. So like in this case, there's, uh, there's this is that tutorial of how you would, you would uh, run the robot, See if it's gonna go. Let's 
So it has this basic motion. We mm -hmm. already have libraries how you would you would run this. Like in this case, you're running it as see if it's gonna go. See the you see the screen? Yeah. 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 So now it's moving and stop. Just right there, it already has all the libraries that you would need in order to connect, in order to run it. And uh, so let's say if we would want to run it for a few seconds, you can do that. And it's using I, I squared C to, I guess, to send data to, to the wheels to connect to the motor controller. Right, probably. Uh, yeah. yeah, so it's all integrated in. But the cool thing is, you know, you're working on it on the browser. It kind of gives you how you would program. And even the controllers itself is you program it. <laughs> See how right you create there. the sliders right there, right there in the screen. So like in this case, I want to uh, link that this control to my uh, my robot and just do this. And now I can just say one is reverse and one is forward. And if I can make them stop, put them to zero. And just like that. Huh. And, 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 See that's that's cool, right? I mean, it's it's all in the browser. You can you you kind of gives you step by step instructions, and then you you know kind of gives you hints how you would program it, and and you can unlink. So let's let's create more, right? Like in this case, I want to a touch at you know have buttons. I have buttons right there, right? And this one would program it. You know, like if you click this button to move forward, backward, left, right, and just right there. Oh, wow. So, That's slick. yeah, so like in this case, it, you know, events, right? Hooking up events. And so now, just right there, there, I can move forward and I can make the robot move and control it. And you can easily, uh, so it's saved there. So this browser is running on your robot, and you're just logging yes. into the IDE that's resident on the robot. Yes. And it's saving in the format of a Jupyter Lab notebook. Yeah, it's all Python, but Python. it's it's it, yeah, it's Python, but it's notebook because you can mix and match, right? HTML components, or like in this case, you know, like text, how you would create um, Markdown. So it's kind of like step-by-step -step tutorial. You know, typically when you're creating a Python program, it's kind of harder to understand what what it is about. So this one have more explanation, and you see the code as you as you execute it. And that, as you I, do that it, was, that's a pretty good way to learn, right? Oh my goodness! Like in this case, the kill switch. They're talking about what the kill switch and what heartbeat is. Uh, so I can. I can make the robot stop once you know it reach a certain you know this is like emergency switch to turn off your robot yeah when it's dead does that kind of thing yeah. uh, so that so it has basic motion it has the it has one for collision avoidance so this one is collision avoidance where you have your training so in this case i have uh you know, kind of like the images, capturing the images from the camera. Yeah. Uh, let's see if we can, if I can. Uh, yeah, let's, let, there's also a teleoperations. Let's start with teleoperations first. This is the one that uses the game pad controller. So in this case, we're going to try to see if it's going to work, right? So we have the controller. This is how you would connect it to the game pad. And these are all open source and you can, you know, you just search for Jetbot. Like in this case, I guess it's because I have this other one running. I need to. I guess I can just restart this thing. Wonder if, if it'll do it. Hey, did that kit include the Jets and Nano, or was that extra? Which one? The kit? Uh, yeah, the Jetbot uh, kit, AI kit. Did that include uh -huh. the Nano? You can actually kit. The kit itself is $150, but you get a bunch because it gets a Wi-Fi, 
you get uh you know the, like the whole kit itself but you can actually build one if you're interested in building one from scratch um you know because there's third party kit but it has you know these are all the different third party kit that you can you know if you're starting oh, up yeah. and you you know you there's one for Seed Studios and, and Spark Fun. But if you want to build your own, there's the bill of materials that you can mix and match, however. But so I was looking at this pricing, right? You have $99 and you have to go through you go through all the the stuff, you know, if you're gonna buy your own camera and you buy your own Wi-Fi and the uh, wheels and you know. It, it adds up <laughs> so i was yeah. like okay i'm just gonna buy a kit <laughs> i see for me i'm i'm more interested in the machine learning side of it and that, that's one one thing i'm i'm really interested in learning and um let's see if this one is gonna run now so uh, does that have anything with regard to the camera in this yes yes I there is one about the camera i just need to so oh, right now display um, okay yeah so let me try to kill some of the and you said uh, that one well, this is all python right these yeah are, these are all python the, code interesting so it looks like it's 115 bucks for the the kit on amazon and then another 100 bucks for the jetson nano but then you're there yeah, yeah it's 115 dollars yeah 100, yeah something like that i'm well, not sure well, the I'm camera itself I'm trying to see where the the camera goes. So, like this case, this is how you would get the camera instance. Let's see if it's gonna go. And this is how you would. I'm having trouble running it now. Um. Let's see. Let's see how. Probably because we're firing too many questions at you. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> uh, what did I do last time? Because it this one is tuple. Oh, okay. It, yeah, there's there's some instructions you have to do because the yeah uh, I guess the uh, what you call this the controller itself. I need to convert it to a where's that HTML five HTML five gamepad. It said that I need to convert it to a, a should have saved that to an Xbox controller according to the instructions here. See how I it tells you like the buttons now? Yeah. Uh, and you know, up, down, left, right. You know, I'm trying <laughs> to control it. So you can see you, you know, if I have connection with the controller, right? So it was able to connect to that. Let's see now if it was able to hook up. The right index, the left motor and, and the, the right motor, and then this one right here. Of course, it, there's no image yet, but I'm gonna get the instance of the camera, and then technically, based from here, I should be able to get the camera <laughs> right uh, there. Okay. You see how simple it is? It's already, of course. of course, taken care of for you. All the libraries that they have, and, it runs and then once the you time. display. <laughs> And had the instance of the camera. Yeah, so that's where it is. And this one is the one that links the. Oh. Yeah, this is the one that links it, link the camera. And now it's turned off. There's the camera is turned off right there. But I think, yeah, I think let's try it again. Let's get the camera, display it. You see the video. You get the heartbeat. So now this is uh, supposed to take pictures. So this is how it would save the pictures. You know, I can have a button on my gamepad to capture photos. And that's how you would do it here. So it was able to capture that. Let's see. So I, I assume they have some process for processing the image in that library to them. Yeah, it has it has a library, Python library that it uses to to control it. And it's all open source, you know, all, all the the code that'll do. 
Uh, I think because I unlinked it twice, but anyway. Um, yeah, it's so that's that's one to control it using using one of these, right? Oh. And if you just want to drive it, tell the operation, add the camera. Uh, the one that I'm interested in actually is this part right here where you have the object following, the road yeah. following, and then the collision avoidance. So it already had, so I was testing the collision avoidance the other day. So this is where you would train the model. I'm not done with the, you know, but it, it has the image collection, how we would load it, and it would, how it would use Python. It would use this device to actually train. You don't have to upload the images up to the, the internet. It trains it on this device. It's it has a GPU. Yeah. It takes a while, uh, but it has, I'll show you where the, the training is. It's uh, none of this donkey things. car stuff where you have to get TensorFlow and Keras and all this other junk set up. Yeah, so this one is, uh, is set up to where, yeah, this is the training. This is actually the training for, for this. Uh, That's so it. it. What it does is it goes to the image, it labels the image. There's two images that you have to label, right? Is, is the camera blocked? Or is it ready to go? So, you know, that's what you're trying to uh, to collect. You collect images on where do you want it to stop when, let's say, there's you know there's a structure in front of it, and then or if if it's ready to move forward, if it's clear or unclear. I think that's 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 the labeling. So, like on my data set, I have a bunch of pictures of free and blocked. So, you know, of course, I have a messy living room, so you see that. <laughs> so pictures of you know, that one's blocked, this one is, you know, this one is free, right? I was kind of, see, I was, I wanted to try it out to where I don't have boundaries, right? I wanted to have it on top of a table where, uh, you know, like in this case, it's free to move forward because it's not yet at the edge of the table. Let's see how that one goes. Uh, <laughs> it was unsuccessful because I wanted without boundaries, like a table itself. Yeah. Uh, without any, you know, that it would just look at the picture and see if, if it's close enough or it's far enough and see how that one goes. But wow. um, so far, it was not successful. I thought I would be able to do that <laughs> without bandwidth. But it will work if there's like a wall in front of it. I guess it will, it will figure that out. But yeah, you capture images. And once you capture images, it would read the folder. And you would do the training this way. It, you know, the training for it's using PyTorch. To, to do the training for each uh, one of the labels. Yeah, it would, huh. yeah. So it's using this, uh, this is the optimizer SGD is what it's using to create uh, the, the model. And once it's done, it would save it. And then once you're able to do that, you do your, you know, the data collection, this is how I captured all the images from the live feed. I'm not going to go through all these, but anyway, you can. It captures it, creates a zip file at the end of the day of this folder, and then you can reuse it, send it somewhere if you want to. But once it has that uh, data set, it uses the train model, and then you know this live demo would load the the model that you generate, and you would use it to 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 run. Uh, the the robot to, to do self driving you know for collision avoidance. So in that case, kind of like donkey car, you know, it, it went around a track, so you knew where to go. Um, and is this just like random? You you set it down and it it either goes forward if it's not blocked and turns left. Yeah. So it so it will do. There I, there's a bunch of samples online. Uh, uh, let's see on YouTube. I think Jetbot. Let's see Jetbot YouTube. Uh, yeah, so like in this case, there's sometimes it's better just to show. See, there's. See, it has collision avoidance. And this is so all. You see it, the robots, right? It's not using other sensors, right? It's just using. Yeah, it's the, only using the camera. So like in this case, this is the line following part. Uh, that's the line following. Uh, 
of course it's yeah that's the line following yeah because it has the path and mm -hmm. just just do all that word following man legos have come a long way <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so that's that's the collision avoidance there's part where you do like i said of course i may have uh, restarted it or something but or had to connect looking to avoid collisions with some other object and to not fall off the cliff i guess right yeah thing. yeah so yeah well you can also you know this this nano device i mean it i i have a sample that actually can process four cameras at the same time mm. so this small device right here there's a sample that i saw that it can process four cameras uh, i think i showed it uh at our other meetup the other day where you have four cameras running at the same time processing the image using the gpu and doing object detection <laughs> so that's that's how powerful this device is for ninety nine dollars. That has a very good GPU. I think I yeah. Uh, it reset yeah. for some reason. My IP address have changed all of a sudden. <laughs> I can see it from here. <laughs> yeah, it, it, that it changed. I guess it rebooted or something. Uh, but anyway, but it's a different way of programming, right? I mean, you you. Program it on the browser, running Python, yeah, uh, and uh, has like some training or like uh, some documentation together with code, and I think it's a good way to learn. Uh, it's a good way to kind of go through, understand the technology, what it can do, uh, and what what are the applications, you know, in terms of self-driving car or some something that you would you would might want to uh to, to kind of play with <laughs> as, yeah. as part of the the new robotics uh, one one more thing that i wanted to show and one of the reasons why i want i enjoyed this is because of the it also have uh integration with um i'm trying to find where that one is uh integration with ross it has yeah. integration with Ross to be Ron, able to do cheater, cheater, <laughs> cheater. So that that one is, I, I'm really surprised how you can do that, but um, how it it can connect. But also, I believe learning more about these. There, Nvidia has this SDK about this Nvidia Isaac, which is a robotic AI development platform where you do your simulation. So it has a way you can do simulation on the, you know, like a simulator. And you train your robot that way. You, you train your robot in the simulator. And then based from that, you can transfer whatever it learned on the simulator to the robot itself. And then it can navigate. So you, can, you have your virtual simulator of your room. You build, you know, uh, path or how, however, you know, it would, it would uh, understand the the room through the simulator. And once the simulator is learned what to do, you can transfer that knowledge to the robot without even, you know, touching the ground. <laughs> Technically, yeah. There's a tool that plugs right into Ross that does uh, simulation. So mm -hmm. once, you, once you give it your robot parameters, I think it's just a really big XML file you dump at it. You now can run your simulation, and I bet that either they're using that same tool or very something, very much something similar like it. Yeah. So that so this one is yeah, I'm talking about the simulator, talking, right? So there's there's like, that simulator right there that he was talking about at Ross. So they even have a Jetbot model in in, for you. in oh, Ross yeah. that you can train your your robot in a simulator. Once it knows ah. how to run in the simulator, then you can transfer that knowledge to the robot itself and it should self-navigate. So, I haven't really tried, but I wanted to learn. In the line following class, line following uh, competition board on it, turn this thing loose on it and run about a billion iterations and go show up and say, hey, Carl, look at this. 
Yeah, I, I look forward <laughs> to doing that, Harold. You and Ron. Let's see. <laughs> Bring it on. Yeah. The mitten is down on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that, it, awesome. it, this is pre it's pretty good. Uh, you know, it was a, a good tool, I think. Uh, Jetson uh, is a good, uh, even if you just want to do learn about, you know, object detection, anything related to AI and machine learning, uh, I think it's a great tool. It looks pretty, yep. pretty, pretty slick. Yes. Thanks for sharing that. It's yeah. very interesting. I'm going to have to, as I said, I'm going to have to dig up my Python book now and review it. It's been like two plus years since I messed with that. So yeah, there is one that I I was kind of like, you know, talking about Python, right? Yeah. There is there is one that I saw about um I have I, I swear I have I have the link here somewhere, but it was uh it was a uh, object segmentation. Something yep. like that is about yeah. or for self, uh, yes, I think it's like image segmentation. Is that the right term for That's a self driving a, car? A traditional uh, computer vision thing, yeah. Yeah, so something like this where it, it, it navigates based, you know, it separates out, you know, which one's the floor and which one are the trees and humans and those things. Uh, there is one that I saw that was. It looks like it might run on these on these device because you know at the end of the day these are just image you know it, it, I think it was like um, it was even like detecting which one's the floor and if there's like a if there's like a it's using anomaly detection to identify okay is, is it safe to move forward or is it safe to you know, not necessarily it's blocked, but is it it's safe? Let let's say if it hasn't encountered yet that 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 that, that it doesn't look like a floor, and maybe it looks like a fire in front of it. It doesn't know that it's a fire. It hasn't really learned that there's there's a fire in front of it because you know you do your training, you do your training through like grass or you know or roads, but for some reason they it kind of knows like hey I'm not supposed to go through that fire even though it do, does look like a road. So that was that was interesting. Huh. But yeah, I'm really handy with my mower. <laughs> <laughs> that's anyway, that's that's what I have. I thought pretty wild. Well, it'd be it's cool to see if you take that, especially if uh, you and Harold take on that challenge line following course. Uh, <laughs> that'd be awesome. I'm cool ahead of me there, but you know I will. I, as soon as I can, I'm going to try it. We'll see what I'm happens. looking forward to it. Uh, it. You might have to hold your breath a long time. But uh, I'm, I'm not going to give up, man. I, I want to do. I, I want to try all those courses because uh, they're there for a reason. Because one, um, even though they look sort of simple, when you're really trying to do a thing, it's always much harder. Yeah. And uh, even the simple things it always is. And and, uh, and I think we've got some decent tools. And um, I think I'm a pretty smart fellow. And I know Ron is. And and by God, uh, we can try to do this and let you it do it on. Yeah, and let it do it all by itself. You know, I'm a big fan of the, the battle bots, but they're just remote controlled uh, shredding machines. You know, and I th th it does take a certain skill level to do those, but to be able to just push the button and stand back and have it do a thing, now that's a robot. You know, that's a that's a thing. You know, it's autonomous decisions. Yeah. yeah, you know, I think that's really cool. Cool beans. Yeah. All righty. So yeah, I. Uh, I send the link to the video that i was talking about oh cool where it, it talks about uh, anomaly mass detection to de detect if if there's a something wrong or you know if it's good to go or not but it, this has something to do with trying to find a path or trying to work you know to navigate the robot yeah, that'll be that'll be neat to see and like to see what the balance is between traditional uh deterministic computer vision and this kind of neural net computer vision because this yeah. seems like there's pros and cons to both and if you can mix them together you could do some pretty pretty swanky stuff computer stop <laughs> okay hey so i think uh we're uh 837 so let's keep moving on so mr jack you got a demo ready 
Are you going to share your screen or hold your phone up? How, yeah, how is this going to go? I can, uh, I'll try the screen sharing. It's a little, uh, the quality of the video isn't that good from how I sent it over to my computer, but it should still show it. Wait, oh, there we go. Present now. Oh, cool. Hmm. Are you showing it? Hold on, it's blocking me. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was going to say. Oh. I don't see it. Okay. Uh, there we go. Excuse me. Ah, come on. There. Hey, there it is. All right, you guys can see it? Yeah. All right, I'll play it. So I cut out any parts where it got stuck because occasionally it did get stuck in a pothole like there. But aside from that, it went all on its own. And it's just vision? Yeah, yeah, it's just watching the side of the road with the camera on the side, the pixie lens, actually. Way to go. Thanks. Or? And it went for about two miles before the wheel finally broke. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> but still, it was fully loaded with a full six-pack and ice and everything. And by the end of those two miles, it still had some ice in it. That's cool. Jack, that's remarkable. Now, Thank you. I got to ask you, if you think back, what was it, four years ago? Five? It was four started? years ago. Could, yeah. could you imagine four years ago that you would have this to show at this point in time? Well, honestly, I expected it to be a three-month project when I started it. So. <laughs> Don't we? <laughs> That's great. Uh, but uh, I'm thinking about making a bigger one now. Cool. With uh, mm -hmm. RTK GPS. Looks like you can get it for a pretty good price. I mean, I guess you guys have been talking about the cheap ones, haven't you? Yeah, SparkFun had two that um, I think one was like two centimeter accuracy and the other was one centimeter. Mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I obviously don't need one centimeter, but rail always plus one, making a bigger one of whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there you go. But and then that one, I'm hoping will have full vending. You know, it will dispense the drink and take the bills and all that. But Ooh. that one will probably be a little longer than this one, even. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're going to do all that stuff, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. And I'll be keeping the red wagon, so I'm just going to get a bigger red wagon this time. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a brand, right? It's a personal yeah. brand. Yeah. Yeah. This could be the future of ice cream trucks. Yeah. You know, oh my that was one thing I always thought is maybe you could have ice cream on it. Yeah. I was kind of <laughs> thinking... I was originally making this for the for the golf course, but I'm thinking it might be better suited for the beach. Since if you think about it, there's no drink service there. Yeah. I mean, obviously this little guy won't do it. Yeah, but you need bigger reels than that. Yeah. Yeah. Sand, yeah. And, <laughs> mm -hmm. Sand and salt water, friends of electronics and electric and mechanics. That's oh, true. Yeah. Not the greatest thing. <laughs> A little, a little sand mm -hmm. in your bearings. Goes a mm -hmm. lot. <laughs> <laughs> Two miles. Yeah, and then here, the there were people mowing their lawns, so the grass clippings went on the sidewalk and confused it a little bit. Ah. Yeah. Huh. Mm -hmm. And so after two miles, it was the wheel, or did the battery run out? Uh, it was the wheel. Wheel. Yeah. I when I started this whole project, I super glued the wheel to the uh, axle because I, like I said, I thought it was going to be a quick three month project. Yeah. <laughs> and it never broke at all, so I never wanted to, you know, mess with it. But it finally <laughs> broke, so I'm going to have to do something a little more professional now. <laughs> so did you have the people wonder about it as they were mowing along? You know, no one really ever seemed to question it. Uh, yeah. Well, they didn't wonder how it was walking itself. Huh? No, yeah. 
I mean, granted, I did have my phone up the whole time videotaping it, so I'm not sure if they just thought that was a quick RC thing or something, but. Mm. <laughs> just no appreciation, right? Don't get nervous. No. <laughs> yeah. I have no idea. So here it's about to end. Is it like a NASCAR finish where the wheel flies off and kills people? Uh, no, not actually. It just it was kind of uneventful. Just plop. Yeah. Just plop down, huh? <laughs> yeah. The reel didn't roll off, honk. Huh? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so that's, that's it. Cool. Thank there you. you. Very yeah. cool, Jack. Very Thanks. cool. Very, very cool. It's cool. Awesome. Can't wait this can't wait till either next week or when it shows up in my house offering a drink. <laughs> yeah. Maybe a few more years from now. <laughs> yeah, I think it's gonna be right. if you're gonna sell ice cream out of it though, you're gonna have to make it heavy enough so that a couple little kids can't come by and pick the thing up and you know, Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Get the Electroshock five thousand from the Robocop movies on there. Yeah. So when they grab it to go lift it off, you just zap the hell out of them. Yeah. That'll that sounds those, legal. That'll teach those crazy kids. Mm -hmm. but, it seems like you could you could uh, save a lot of trouble with the mechanics if you just you know reprogrammed your Tesla. Yeah, yeah, that Ooh, does yeah. sound a little simpler. Uh, <laughs> and ice cream out of the back of the Tesla. There you go. <laughs> hmm. All right, so let's let's swing around here. Thanks a ton, Jack. That's oh that's yeah, thank cool. you. So, Mister Ray, you got? Oh, I do uh, have a quick question. Uh, oh, yep. Are we going to be? I saw that the makerspace was open. Are we going to be going back then? Really? Is it open? Yeah. yeah it's open. It just opens like today. Yeah, I, and I was actually going to maybe drop by there Friday. Seems like you have to wear a mask. Uh, and they're, yeah, they're trying to keep, you know, six feet apart and stuff. But mm -hmm. yeah, glance at it. Mm -hmm. oh, Carl. Well, so. I you know, I, as I say, I'm not rushing back because, as you know, numbers, you know, restaurants are reporting places where restaurants are having people mm -hmm. having that. So I would say at this stage, I wouldn't overly say we should rush back. Mm -hmm. that. You know, just, well, we, yeah. we probably should look at our scheduling now because um, uh, I'm sure nobody's been keeping the schedule up. So well, we may I had a bunch yeah. of rooms reserved. I think into June, and then I updated the the oh, posting. Well, maybe I'm wrong. well yeah, no, maybe. but but we're now in June, right? June's almost over. So, but I would I would just ask, you know, the sample on the line here. Um, is there anybody that feels really strongly about wanting to go, or they wouldn't go? Like, let's take <laughs> oh, a show of hands. Raise your hand. The key, as I say, is that you know, right now. In theory, you know, you should be six feet apart. In other words, I tend to go out some. But the catch is, ideally, you don't want it to be in an enclosed area for any length of time. It's the right. catch. So right. like in the case of the Brassmith, I think we're tending to think of doing that outdoors next month as a meeting versus indoor. So, you know, right. that's why I said it's a number of people, the mouth space, are they wearing the mats or not? You know, there's all those variables. So let's let's just take a quick uh, show of hands on this call, okay? So raise your hand if you would be open or wanting to go meet at the space in the next, say, two weeks. Two people would be willing to do that. Now, how many people would be reluctant to go in the next two weeks? Well, at this stage, I'm, okay. as I say, I'm cautiously going out because there are people out there that – you know, like the other day, I was at some grocery store, and you know, three hours down, I heard a cough from that. So, to give you an example, why I said, you know, as soon as we behave and did our CISFA, wear the mask. Oh, by the way, they do it. You have to wear a mask there. And in theory, you have to take your temperature beforehand. And I would say, if you go to the website, you'll see somewhere they have posted sort of the list of things. So, the reality is, you know, it only takes one. So I'm going to go out on a limb, and uh, I'm going to say at least for the next week. Why don't we just why don't we just check the hands on a oh, weekly yeah. basis? Because uh, uh, at I least for a week or two, you know, and then sort of gauge from there. At least, I, I can assure you from what I'm reading and um, 
you know, what I get from my wife who works at Medical City. Um, I mean, we are leading the charge, right? We in Florida and other places, we're leading oh, yeah. the charge with the case count climbing back up again. And you realize that as they're starting to emphasize in certain places where you hear it, they're emphasizing now the hospital available bed count problem. So that's what's going to really drive the problem yeah. is, you know, when they have the hospital fill up and, you know, what do you do then sort of at its bed. So, so let's, let's just, uh, let's just take our temperature around the room here and, and apologies to those in the minority that, that would want to go to the space in the next week or two. But I'd say for the next week, at least let's, let's hold off a little bit longer. I think that would be a good idea. And then we'll recheck. We'll take that temperature again next Tuesday good. and uh, just see where we are. We we could let those Mavericks go, and if they catch COVID, we'll know not to go. So. Well, there's and okay. So that's another question. If for those of you who would rather go there, would you like me to reserve the room and just block it for those who want to go? So Jack and Is Dave, it expensive for example, to reserve a room. No, it's free. I mean, as a oh, member, okay. like, I, I, sure. as I said, it, it, read the thread. They have a thread out there that you can look at. But you know, they already are. Like, there was one thread or question where somebody wanted to uh, smoke, and they basically said, "No, you can't be within ten feet of the door." Blah blah blah. And then the break room thing that they have, for example, mm -hmm. they don't have the break room basically uh, anymore. You, know, mm -hmm. you can look at the food there, but you can't sit there to eat in the break room. So, mm -hmm. you know, the whole they're trying to, the goal is basically, you know, they want to keep that says for apart from people type thing. You know, mm -hmm. in the hallway, you can't, but you know, that's where you wear masks too. Mm -hmm. So, that's yeah. why, you know, they're trying to figure it out. You know, mm -hmm. And I'm not really rushing to be yeah, <laughs> there for that reason. We could we could still have this you know type of meeting. Oh yeah, we could do this yeah, meeting. Really and if, if you want to, we could sorry have a hybrid version of this yeah. where yeah. we have it some you know who want to be there could and they have sort of a two two palm part. Yeah, would be my representation. But you know, right now I was set offhand. You know, they're basically using the classroom type things like the computer classroom that they had set up. They have that same a block off, so you can't go in and use that room. I don't know if you saw that room. They were starting to build that one room where they had some computer sort of like computer lab. Yeah. And as far as I know, that they have that basic block off. That's why I say Friday. I plan to go by sort of to you know see, but yeah. well, I'm let me know if in a day with you know when there's not that many people there because the whole goal is you know less people is better. Mm -hmm. All righty. I'm, I might go to the makerspace as an individual one time because I have a bunch of stuff that I want to that I had planned to dump over to dump off there. But uh, for meeting regular meetings, I'm not too keen on that at this moment. Oh, and if you're going to Doug, if you're going to drop stuff off, if you're thinking that uh, the shelf that they have for stuff, yeah, change shelf, they don't have that. Open. That was one of the things in the list. Oh, it's not okay. open. Okay. So yeah, well, let, said, me, you know, let, me it, let me put it this way. Uh, so, for, for if anybody's interested, the biggest item I'm doing is a is a uh, a, miller, a militarized 50 megahertz oscilloscope that's about 24 inches deep and probably eight inches across and 12 to 15 inches up anybody is interested in that they can contact me and let me know it works and like i say this thing will be working when we're dead because it's you know the government it's made by the government and uh it's made by hewlett packard and it was a real company uh so if anybody's interested you know just let me know Okay. Oh, speaking of that kind of stuff, Carl, the poke it, did you see the update? I missed it. What's the news? Uh, I think September. <laughs> okay. September. For what? It's a bad year for Kickstarters. Yeah. Uh, Harold and I d jumped in on, 
You remember that little Bluetooth low energy oscilloscope that I have runs on my phone? Yeah. Well, they have a newer version that where you can get two or three of them or four of them and have and turn them into a multi-channel oscilloscope on your phone. Oh, that's cool. So, so I got uh, I got one. I think Harold got one, something like that. You know, oh, I uh, ordered two because you ordered two because I. Oh, I then we each got two. two. Yeah. You, you, so Harold and I are going to put ours together, together and we're going to make a four-channel scope on a phone. You go to <laughs> that you, you got to get this man, or you ain't nothing. You know, I you know I heard those words. So. <laughs> I ordered two. I'm with you. I just no, forgot. No man. It's been so long. I know it has been a while. Factories closed. Yeah, we were hoping to, I mean at one point we thought we were going to get some really really early stuff in July on that but uh, they've had some issues so they're pushing back a little bit so maybe uh, end of August 1st September which yeah. is not terrible for Kickstarters and knowing that people are shutting down and you can't get all that stuff happening yeah so that's 2020 not 2021 right yeah, <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, yes, yeah, yes, I really want it nice and shiny, you know, but I just kind of got to wait. Yeah, I don't know if we're I'm never going to see the stuff we ordered from Bang. Okay, so we're at uh, eight or ten minutes to the hour, so let's see. We got uh, Doug, Dave, Ray, and Carl still. So, Doug, do you have a couple minute update? No updates from Doug. He's waving his hands. Okay, Ray, do you have any no update from Dave? No. Nope. No update from Ray. Nope. No. Update it's down to Ray. Carl. Or you guys are in trouble. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I'll be relatively fast. Then I'm going to share properly because OBS doesn't share a high enough resolution. I put a link in the Slack for those that are curious, and um, you should be seeing my screen anytime now. So here's the makerspace rules, and they show, you know, these kinds of masks are not allowed. Unlike our news media, who doesn't have a clue yet, makerspace does. I actually mm -hmm. chatted with uh, one of the guys on the board at the makerspace is really tied into the hospital system in Dallas. So I really respect the, the guidance that they have here. Mm -hmm. um, so they want the N95s, not the P95s? No, the, the trouble is that it has this valve. So you do not oh. want to mask the valve right. because it will sort of protect you and it will do nothing to protect those around you. Yeah, it just lets it fly. And the point of these masks, the better they apparently serve a better function by keeping your stuff <clears throat> from getting at somebody else. So anybody that's wearing these is either being selfish or just not aware of what's going on. Or both, but you, these are these are bad masks in this virus. But they have all these rules. And if I'm reading this right at a glance, it shows that the classrooms are not open for groups; they're only open for individual use. So we'll just see how that follows along. Yeah, that's sort of why. That's why I thought. Oh, yeah, man, that's why I was saying that their break room is not really a break room. Now they're using the classrooms for that. Okay. Yeah. So so, all right, so moving along. So I have something not virus related. If you remember, I've been dabbling with this uh, on-off shim for Raspberry Pi so that you can gracefully turn on and turn off the Raspberry Pi with, without it uh, risking of corrupting the file system. Uh, I bought two of these from Adafruit and wouldn't you know, but the first one didn't work. Uh, it cost me, I don't know how many hours and I finally called Pimeroni. Um, they had me send photos of the solder joints and that satisfied them. So they're going to send me a replacement, but they also had me try it out without soldering. So I just wedged it on the pins of a device and the thing is sweet. It works like a champ. So I ordered a handful more actually. <laughs> and I look closer. They actually have several variations on this. Now this one does not have the on off button, but what it does do is let you just feed in three to 16 volts directly and it'll run the pi mm -hmm. so i thought that was pretty cool because now i mean you don't need an external supply just give it almost a raw battery probably and or uh, and then on the raw battery front they have another one where you just feed it a lipo battery now this one will not charge the lipo battery but 
it has uh, it has the inputs to the Pi set up so that uh, <clears throat> if it triggers a low voltage, it'll assert GPIO4, and then they provide a GitHub where you can have the GPIO4 do a safe shutdown of your Pi. So, uh, so I thought those were interesting enough that I ordered I ordered a sample or two, and uh, anyhow, that was one thing where I made progress this week. That was nice. The other area was on this guy. Now, Harold and Ron may have seen this already, but uh, this is my Club Car Donkey Bot. So the 2016 Club Robot based with a donkey car sort of top. And this is my amazing course in our piano room. And this was the first training set that I had and the first time I tried to run it. And would you look at that? It drove itself around. Look at that. Yeah, baby. More or less. <laughs> so there's some lessons learned. The first is that the objects that it triggers on need to be within the field of view. So it lost itself there. The other is don't train how to drive into the piano bench. I trained how to drive into the piano bench. And the other thing is, you know, don't ever stop during your training. Because I had made the mistake of stopping and... Uh, it thought it had to stop there, so it took a while before it got up and run again. But uh, I only I only drove it around this little lap like five times, and I had maybe twelve hundred images, two thousand images. Yeah. It took about five minutes to uh, to train the net on my laptop, and woohoo, it's up and running. So. Uh, Ooh. And that's with the uh, that's with the spy interface that I made the custom spy interface that's a two way direct, uh, communication from the Pi to the Mega. And uh, and then the second time was not as successful. I think what happened was that uh, the Pi was really doing things differently, and it uh, it wound up. Uh, it, it wasn't sending commands very often uh, down to the mega. It was probably less than two thirds of the commands were getting down there. And as a result, the robot, I, I didn't have it smart enough. So it was running on stale data. So it really kept running into things. But, but anyhow, I felt really good that that was actually working. It took like 20 or 30 minutes to find the, uh, the donkey car web page button that lets you turn it into autonomous mode. But once I did that, it just fired up and ran. Woohoo. Yeah. <laughs> and now here Ron puts it to shame with this uh, this new toy that looks even easier, more slicker to <laughs> use. So <laughs> now you can convert it to a jet bot. Exactly. <laughs> and how how soon until this thing goes in a scrap heap and squirrel? No one. <laughs> So, cool. All right, so um, that's all I had for tonight. Uh, so is there anything else anyone wanted to chat about? Oh, actually, I lied. There's one more thing. I have something to share, so let me find it. Um, it is hiding over here. So Murray sent a note from New Zealand. He said his new job is going well. Um, he should be able to join other times. He just couldn't uh, today because he has a. Uh, it's already his tomorrow, our tomorrow, and he's he's in the middle of a telecom or something. But he said that. Where's his mail? He said that. Um, here it is. Um, he got his itsy bitsy communication thing running now. So he's uh, he's able to receive signals from his new integrated IR bumper front end. Um, so he's making progress even that he's starting a new new drive, a new a new uh, new job. Yeah. So that's that's it. Good. Okay, got the thumbs up from Doug. That's the signal mm -hmm. of something. So uh, if there's nothing else, we, we adjourn for this night and rejoin online again, bring our virtual masks, and uh, next Tuesday night. Yeah, sounds great. Sounds good. Okay, guys.
Have All a good right. evening, good weekend. May the electrons yep. serve your robots well. Take care now. Yeah, take care. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.